Hi, it's Janelle McClarty again, and welcome back to the Shopify for Beginners course. In this section, we're going to talk about the important areas to look at when you complete the setup of your Shopify store. So I'm going to show you the area that a lot of people overlook, but you should really run through it in detail, and that's the settings area located on the bottom left hand corner of your window. So when you click on settings, you're going to see all these areas that should that you should look through and I'm going to go through the top four areas, especially for beginners that you need to just look through briefly and ensure that everything is set up correctly. So the first area is just the general settings where you're going to view and update your store settings. Um, so this is where you have your store name, make sure that's correct, um, your account email and the sender email. So this is the email address your customers will see when you send an email to them. But this email is where Shopify will give you notifications. So you can have two different email addresses here or you just use the same one. Um, you can input your store industry here. So if you're selling clothing, electronics, furniture, you just input that. If you don't see um, your industry here, you click other. You're going to put the legal name of your business here. You're going to put your business phone number here. So I'm just putting in a sample number. You're going to put your business street address and double check your city, postal code, all of this information because this is what's going to appear on your store invoices. You're going to check that your time zone is correct, as well as your you can change your default weight in unit systems. So if you're used to working in grams or your products are smaller products, you would put this um, area in grams. Um, so let's say you're selling jewelry or t-shirts or clothing, but if you're selling larger products, I recommend using kilograms so that you can input the best default weight area here. Um, the unit system, so if you're using imperial or metric system, you just set your defaults there. Um, for invoicing or order numbers, you can put your prefix or suffix um, digits here so that your invoices match whatever invoicing system you use. Um, and the numbers match. So if you're starting off new, you don't really need to worry about this. Um, and if you're a new business, you don't really need to worry about this as well. And your store currency. So you're selling Canadian dollars, US, Euros, you set that here. So that's it for the general settings. We're going to move on to the location settings. So this is where we're going to manage where you fulfill your orders, where you sell your products, and where you stock your inventory. So if you do all of this in one location, um, and since this is, this is a beginner's course, you might have done this um, at your home. So maybe you have your inventory at home, you fulfill your orders at home, and then you ship out from your local um, mailing service, then this could all be one address. But if not, you have in the basic plan one, one to four locations that you can put into this area. So let's say you have um, another location where you put your inventory, like a warehouse location, you would input that here and you would click on add location, which is at the top right. And let's say your warehouse is the Ontario warehouse. And then you put the exact address for the warehouse and then you save it and that's it. And now you now you're going to have two warehouses or even have to put the address, but you're going to have two warehouse. You're going to have two locations and one can be for, as I said, stock inventory and one can be where you fulfill orders like it really doesn't matter. Um, but this is just going to help you with inventory management and with your shipping costs. Now I'm going to move on to the third important area that you should look for when completing the setup, 
of your Shopify site, which is your account information. So this is where you review your plan information and manage the staff in your that can have access to your Shopify store and um, the status of your store. You can update that if you need to. So this first area right here is where you see the plan. This Shopify store is currently set up on the basic plan, which is the lowest plan. These are all the plan details. You can upgrade or downgrade your plan by clicking this button. And you can compare the plans by clicking that button. This area is where you add or remove any accounts or permissions for people that you want to have access to the account. So maybe you have a web developer or designer or maybe you have a person who's doing marketing for your store that needs access, you would give them not your exact store login details, you'd actually create an account for them by clicking on that add staff account button. You would input the person's name, you would input the person's email address, you would send an invite. Oh, actually, you would uncheck this if you don't want them to have full permission and you would check off where do you want them to have access to. So if it's a developer, yes, I would give them full permission. If it's not a developer, and let's say it's just someone helping you with your inventory, you would just give them access to the orders area. So they can maybe see, okay, this is how many orders you have, this is how much inventory they need to prepare. If it's someone who's doing um, marketing for your site, you would put the marketing tab, and maybe you would check off the discount area because they're gonna be managing what discounts um, are there in relation to your marketing and maybe you would check off the gift cards area so that they can create gift cards and codes and discount codes for you um, So once you do that you'd press send invite and Shopify will automatically send to the email address you put here an invitation for this person to have access to only the areas that you gave them permission to access Now we're gonna go back and the last area is login services and store status. So um, login services allows staff to use external services to log into Shopify. So right now it's disabled. So staff can't use um, additional apps to log in. If you enabled it, um, Shopify would allow them to um, any excess users, which you created up here, to log in maybe using a Google app, or it says right here, Google apps is the only thing that's enabled. Um, so that's that's it. So it's not really, this area is not really that big of a deal, but this area, store status, if you want to um, close your store, or just pause it or turn it off, this is where you would do that. So some people need to do that as they put a little asterisk here due to COVID-19 or let's say any changes in your business, you can just close your store or turn it off online and they will save it for 30 days if you do change your mind. And the last area that's super important is the payments area. So this is how you set up how you're going to pay Shopify and how you're going to get paid. So um, what types of payment providers you're going to be offering to the users of your Shopify store. Um, so right here you have Shopify payments. Um, this is the rates that they offer. So it's 2.9% plus 30 cents per card transaction. Um, if you want to activate that, you can do that. Um, a lot of you can activate literally all of these different types of payment options and have as many options available for your users as possible, or you can just activate one. So if you have a business PayPal account and you just want to use PayPal to accept um, the funds and from the sales that you get from your store, you would just activate your PayPal Express checkout. If you want to use a third party provider, let's say like Stripe or Snappy Checkout, you would just click on this and choose a third party provider that's on this list. So let's look and see if, um, see, we have like even QuickBooks here, QuickPay, 
we have secure pay, sage pay. So there's a lot of third party payment providers that are linked to Shopify that we can use as long as they're here. Moneris is pretty popular as well. To checkout is right here. So yeah. And then we have alternate payment methods. So let's see. So there's so many different ones. So if you if you re you're really not confined to just using Shopify's payment um, gateway, which is the first one that I showed you, PayPal. So Shopify payments is first. PayPal is second most popular. Then you have all these third parties, and then lastly you have a manual payment method. So if you want, um, when customers make a manual payment, um, it can be processed outside of your online store. So it can be through bank deposit, money order, or cash on delivery. So let's say you want customers to just be able to make the order using your online store, but then they actually come to the store to pick up and then pay once they receive the product in their hand. This is the option you would choose right here. And then these are other manual payment options available as well. And then the last area is the payment capture area. So after a customer's payment method is authorized, it needs to be captured so that sales can be processed. So you can automatically capture the payment once the customer gets to the checkout area and clicks make purchase, or you can manually capture the payment. So the customer's payment method is authorized at the time of their order, but you need to go in and manually authorize and click that authorization for each transaction that comes in. So it's up to you. Most people uh, um, want to do it automatically, but some people are, are super cautious and want to check each payment first, especially let's say it's a high-end um, boutique jewelry store and it's a lot of money per purchase. Maybe you want to double check um, each purchase and see if everything lines up before you capture the payment just to avoid any um, mishaps that may happen or false transactions. So it's up to you as a store owner to pick which one you want to set up your payment capture for. So those are the setup areas that we'll go through in the Shopify for beginners section. Um, in the intermediate course, we're going to dive deeper into shipping and delivery, taxes, um, billing, and each notification area. So these areas are a little bit more in depth and we'll go over that in the intermediate section of the course. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.